Hello and welcome. You've joined us on Business Lunch. I'm Nisha Podar and with me is Manglam Malu. Manglam, good afternoon. So the markets are looking weakish today again and uh, a lot has to really do to do with also the global factors at play. So right now it's uh, Nifty 50 as well as Sensex, uh, even though it's uh, off the lowest point of the day, but we can't make much of it at the moment because still almost a percent down in Nifty 50 as well as Sensex and mid cap index is taking a slightly deeper cut. As far as the advanced decline is concerned, the market breadth is extremely negative at this point. Only a clutch of stocks probably in the green because of some news flows coming in, the types of Sun Pharma. But overall, there's an important also announcement coming in uh, globally on the US-China trade tensions. And there is some uh, pacificatory statement really coming in stating that China and U.S. have reached high-level consensus and some trade deal could be reached in 90 days, but that's actually not doing much at this point, Mangla. Absolutely. You know, uh, you spoke about the markets and there's also this big India-Australia match which is con currently underway and there's been an uncanny resemblance between the market today and the India versus Australia match. Why do I say that? Because before open, India was down 41 for 4 and SGX Nifty indicated an 80-point downtick. A weak opening was expected. Post-opening, India's middle order declined and then we had uh, the Nifty falling to the 20-day moving average. Now, both the markets as well as India are off the lows of the day and Cheteshwar Pujara near showing nerves of steel. And for the Nifty, is the steel stocks which have moved from the lows of the day. Pull up anything like a JSW steel or a Tata steel. So that's our boys in white down under. But let's shift focus to the global markets itself. The Asian markets under pressure today. We have CNBC's Nancy Hungerford joining in. Hi there, good to see you. Well, that's right. It's been a tough day for Asian markets across the board here. And you were just going through some of the positive comments, in fact, that we've just received from China's Commerce Ministry, as reported by Reuters. But keep in mind, the mainland markets were actually shut before those comments did hit the wires. So markets in the mainland haven't had a chance to react. And you're looking at the Shanghai Composite lower by almost 1.7% on the session. The Shenzhen Composite off by about 2.2%. The Tech Heavy Index under pressure, as we've seen tech under pressure across the board here in Asia. The Hang Seng, it is just about 30 minutes left into the trading session here, and it is off too by about 2.5%. Tech names, though, very much on the decline here amid those concerns over the rest of the Huawei CFO in Canada. Let's show you some of the telco plays that have been under pressure as a result of that development. A lot of uncertainty as to what this will mean with U.S.-China tensions going forward. And keep in mind, this sector is right at the heart of those tensions. You're looking at ZTE, which has already come under scrutiny in the United States under pressure today, closing lower by 7.8 percent. The A shares lower by 5.7 percent there. And it's not just the telco plays. You're talking about Han High Precision, of course, a big supplier to Apple, TSMC also on the back foot. And then we saw semiconductors in the Japan session under pressure, not just semiconductors, I should say. Once again, tech across the board in Japan, big names that tend to attract foreign investors buying and selling on those respective days. Nintendo off 4 percent there. And we should point out that some SoftBank has been under some significant pressure today. Those shares closed lower by almost 5%. Yes, there are some concerns here about their relations with Huawei, some 5G cooperation they've worked on, but also, separate to that news, there was a mobile disruption reported in Japan that seems to have been weighing on investors' sentiment there as well. So you get the picture. A lot of concerns around the Huawei CFO's arrest, but perhaps the tune we're hearing from the China's Commerce Ministry may work to offset some of those concerns. Back to you for now. Exactly, Nancy. So that those are the uh, comments really coming in that probably could be pacificatory in nature, given the Huawei uh, arrest that has really come in. Thanks so much for getting us all the latest update coming in. Global markets will be something that we'll um, watch out for, and India is really in tune and really uh, positioning itself according to the global news flow that is coming in. But oil prices, they are also something to watch out for. Volatile ahead of the closely watched OPEC meeting and the cartel. Russia and other allies producers will meet in Vienna later this afternoon and discuss cutting output to help shore up the prices and also curb excess supply glut. And Manisha Gupta is right here to take us through all that's expected and also the way forward for crude oil prices. Manisha.
Well, thank you so much for that. Yes, 175th OPEC meeting is today. It begins 2 p.m. India time, and there is a conference at 5.30 p.m., the press conference, that is, and that is where we will start hearing those comments. And then tomorrow, you have the 5th OPEC and the Allies meeting, which again uh, concludes with a press conference at 5.30 p.m. So, yeah, it is going to be two very busy days when it comes to the crude oil prices and, of course, its impact on other asset classes. What we do understand is that there's a lot of uncertainty as we get into this meeting because Qatar member has quit OPEC. Iran says that they want to be excluded from the output cut agreement because they anyway are bearing the brunt of U.S. sanctions. And then U.S. itself has been telling OPEC members and allies not to cut supplies right now because this is exactly where they want the prices to be. So there is a lot of uncertainty on whether OPEC will, uh, you know, bend under the pressure from U.S. or will they actually go out and cut uh, output from here on. One million barrel per day is what the markets have factored in. Anything less than that and you will see the crude oil prices actually go in for yet another sell-off. Anything more than that, and we might see a rebound come in for the crude oil prices as well. So as of now, most of the oil investors and traders are on the sidelines waiting for the number, and that is when you will see positions being built. Right, Manisha, thanks a lot for that. So we will keep an eye out on the developments out there. In fact, let's also hear out what analysts are expecting from today's OPEC meet, which is currently underway in Vienna. Whilst oil markets were very finely balanced, literally a few months ago, a uh, policy-led increase in production from three major producers, U.S., Russia, and Saudi Arabia, has just taken the supply above the demand now. And now, basically, this is the excess that we have in market, and we will keep going down if OPEC does nothing. There is concern in the market out there that, you know, President Trump is going to lean very heavily on the Saudis to do nothing. But frankly, I think it's in the Saudis' own domestic interest to pull these barrels. I mean, they essentially oversupplied the market over the summer, and now I think they're going to have to pull those barrels back. A, min a million is essentially where we're going to start from in terms of a cut. I think the question is, do we get up to potentially 1.5 or higher? But, I mean, my base case is they pull this thing back by a million. If there is no cut at all um, in the meeting uh, today and tomorrow, then I think there's a lot of room for the crude prices to um, fall even further. I mean, I don't know how much more they will fall, but, um, you know, the market right now is uh, uh, quite oversupplied. And um, the market is already expecting that um, OPEC and allies will cut uh, at least one million barrels per day. So if it comes out that they don't cut anything, or if they cut less than that, I think this will put a lot of pressure on crude prices. All right, those comments coming in, uh, those were reassuring comments of trade tensions really easing between U.S. and China, and that has had some impact on our Indian markets as well, off the low point of the day at this point, both Sensex as well as Nifty. Let's slip into a short breather on that note, and up next on the show, the Cabinet may really take up the merger of the state-run power companies, PFC as well as REC. More details on that when we return.